Now, people are talking about should grid have storage, particularly when I am using solar and wind, hmm, one is talking about storage. Why is one talking about storage now? Why was there no storage? First of all, there is no technology available for energy storage, very expensive. We will look into that in detail. Batteries has emerged to be the best storage technique. We are not talking about small battery, we are talking about large batteries now. We'll, this is one of the things that we will talk about when we talk about renewable energy. See, if it was, so what did you do conventionally to match supply and demand? Well, 10 years back in India, the generation was always less than the load, demand was always higher than the supply. Then it was easy, you do a blackout in areas. As a child, child as kids, you may have heard of, suddenly there is a power cut. Now, the power cuts are very rare, but there used to be huge power cuts in India. Hmm? Sometimes one hour, two hour. Chennai, for example, used to have 10 years back, four hour power cut a day, routinely. Why? Because total generation capacity was less than what the total, uh, what whole of India was using. So, select area will get power cuts, load shedding also it is what used to be called. All of you have remember that? Huh? So, that used to happen. Now, however, from 2006 onwards, 2005 onwards, suddenly coal based generation started increasing like anything and has gone on increasing by 14, 2014 or 15, 14 we had crossed already the demand. And it has gone on increasing today. In fact, our capacity is much more than demand. 40 percent of our capacity remains idle at any time. Foolish decision around 2014, 15, 16 to keep on increasing the uh, capacity. Hmm? Now, those plants are lying idle mostly coal plants, but that load shedding used to be, now, now you have surplus. So, what do you do? You no longer can shut down the demand that what is called uh, the um, uh, blackouts, not, black, what, not blackouts, the term used to be uh, load shedding. Now, you cut down the generators, you shut down the generators. to match supply. Which generator to shut down by how much reduce power from generators is a decision that has to be taken nationwide, state wide as the grids get connected. Now, if there are different kind of generating stations, there is for example, uh, oil based generator or diesel generator. It can be turned on or turned off instantly. Any diesel and load, but the diesel oil based generator are extremely expensive, hmm? 20 rupees per kilowatt hour. Hmm? They can be shut down, gas based generator can be turned on, turned off any minute, second, like our LPG gas cell huh? can be turned on. Coal based plants can also be turned on, turned off, but not to that fast, maybe one or two hours, because there is already steam being generated. You cannot just cut down, you can start reducing takes time, but you can with half an hour, one hour, you can reduce, increase, you can increase, reduce, do not feed more coal. If you feed less coal, well, but the heat is still there, steam will still be generated, maybe in half an hour's time, the amount of steam available will become less and you will get less, gener less generation. Understand that? Hmm? Now, uh, what about solar? How do you turn off solar? Well, you turn off solar, you have to bring clouds. You cannot turn off solar. You can waste solar. Disconnect, solar energy generated will be wasted. 
you cannot turn it off. Similarly, wind generated wind will be generating electricity. How do you turn it off? This depends on God. You no longer human being have no control over solar and wind generation. You can of course waste energy by not connecting to the grid. So, we suddenly renewable energy is not controllable and therefore, the storage becomes very important. Hmm? We will discuss this in greater detail when we talk about renewable energy. For the time being, we simply sort of say that you need to communicate to the grid to tell I am taking so much of energy from each charger, each charger has to communicate that is a communication with the energy operator. Now, if it is a public charger you want to make a payment saying I it is like a petrol, I have taken so much power I want to make a payment. So, there has to be a payment gateway uh, incorporated in a charger. There has to be a communication with the vehicle because vehicle will tell me how much energy, what is the voltage, what is the current that I and it, it changes over time. I just showed you it is not constant and charger has standardized grid and vehicle power connectors. So, grid connectors has to be st standardized what is the and vehicle power. Now, this may incorporate communication along with power. How will you communicate? You can have a line the power lines plus a communication line. Almost all chargers have power and communication line. This is what a charger consists of. Okay. Now, this is a detailed diagram of the charger. Uh, only the electrical engineers will understand. This is a charger reaching control unit and charging control and this is the battery. This is the battery, uh, traction battery. Now, charging control unit will communicate with this charging control unit telling what is the communication is there and what is the power, what is the should I cut off, should I continue to charge those signals are there. Plus the DC energy that will flow and of course, there will be leakage current. This is a typical charger and this is the typical, this is the typical charger, this is a typical vehicle. Hmm? So, all these lines are there saying what rate to charge, communication lines are there plus the power lines are there. Uh, we will get into more detail, but there are different kind of chargers. First kind of charger is called level 1 and level 2 AC chargers and level 3 DC chargers. Now, level 1 and 2 is this charge. You connect to the grid all the way 5 ampere plug or a 15 ampere plug. 5 ampere plug which I used for my cell phone charging or any other, 15 ampere which I used for my refrigerator, washing machine. Uh, so, I depending on the power that I need, I will take those plugs. Of course, I may use the industrial plugs if I am going to connect to a industrial version of the same plugs which when I connect to the public charger. And of course, this charger will also have metering and this thing. And this will this plug point will then after metering and billing will go to this charger which will convert the AC to DC and will communicate with the battery. This is called level 1 or level 2 charger. We will get into details what is level 1, what is level 2. It is always what is called on board charging, it is inside the vehicle. I have my, my vehicle a level 1 charger which I take, plug it in and I plug it in. Of course, whether they are doing metering or not depends on them, uh, but ideally if it is a public charger they have to do metering. I have a plug point at my home, so it comes as a part of home metering. I have a uh, such kind of plug at uh, uh, research park where it goes as a part of research park building. So, this is level 1 and level 2 charger. This charger is in my car. I take it out and then uh, or actually this charger is built into my car. This charger actually is built into my car. Hmm? 
So, I connect and then my battery gets charged. Level 3 charger is very often different, it is a DC charger. So, the battery or the car is here and this is a part of public. It not just does the metering and building, it also does the converter. It is a higher power charger, level 3 charger. We will get into details of it, this was just a uh, and it is a DC because you will directly feed the battery. Here it is AC, it will I will connect it to my charger which inside the vehicle there is a charger which will connect to this. Some of the parameters that are of importance, charger efficiency. Now, why efficiency? Suppose it is 90 percent efficiency, 10 percent power is wasted during charging. I am paying for it. One, I am wasting power, I am paying for it. It also produces heat. Good chargers, there should be a have higher efficiency. Hmm? Ideally, 96, 97, 98 percent. Poor charges will have 80 percent efficiency, there will be in between charges. It depends on the cost, if you are willing to pay higher cost, you will get a higher charger efficiency. Charger protection should always be there, charger power factor correction and charger cost. These are the four parameters that I have to worry about. Onboard chargers are the chargers which I carry in my electric vehicles. They will be portable or non portable, portable means I can just carry it from one vehicle to another. I can take it to use to my home. Non-portable it is fixed to my vehicle. So, I have a AC charger fixed level 1 charger uh, which is fixed in my vehicle. Uh, level 1 plug from there I take it and then it is fixed. Sold with the vehicle and typically will connect to AC. Uh, 2 wheelers, 3 wheelers will all connect to 5 amperes. Rectifier is in the vehicle, AC to DC converter is with the charger. Adds to the vehicle cost, must be very low in Indian context. I can connect to the single, because this is a part of a part of a vehicle. Uh, can connect to single phase or three phase power sockets at home or at public places. Hmm? So, this is what the onboard charges. Hmm? With the two wheeler scooter, you will be given AC charger. It will connect to the battery and it will connect to your 230 volt. It will be a portable. With cars, typically it is already built in, the charger otherwise will become bigger. Off board chargers, on the other hand, charger is not in the vehicle, usually large and DC charger, sometimes AC also can be. The charger is installed in public places including offices or homes and the vehicle comes with a socket, DC socket, it is a DC charger, AC socket which will get plugged. So, we will talk both about onboard and offboard chargers. 